the mind sees and the eyes see only within a certain frequential range. But the intuition aspect of it, the pineal gland, the soul, you name it, that's a totally different story. Now, this is not necessarily a spiritual episode, but I want you guys to think about taking your camera, whether it's your phone or, you know, a Polaroid camera, you name it, right? And just walking around your house and everywhere you go, every time you take a picture, some odd anomaly comes up. And the first couple of times, it's like maybe you could excuse it for something, right? But I mean, every single time, these very eerie and creepy looking Not even humanoids, just general like beings pop up and you can't explain it. Now, before I do that, I just want to give a quick shout out to me just free. Truth Matters 777 on Instagram. Uh, Energy for you, the spirit one. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Sunny Slickback. Gabriel Perez from Toronto. As well as Ben and Nez from Australia. David Hernandez. Jordan and Gabriel Garcia. Thank you so much, everyone. All of you, even everyone who I didn't shout out, obviously, for listening and watching. Um, We got a great episode today, so let's get into it. Now, Project Bright, harvesting RH null blood for demon phantom gates. Now, why do I say demon phantom gates right now? And you might even say, what is a phantom gate? So before we jump into any of this, before we jump into the documents, the patents, the visuals and all that, One thing I'd like to explain is this, that stargates are synthetic in the same way that Merkabas are in general. And stargates are synthetic in the fact that it takes more physical three-dimensional technology to harness the energy from other dimensions into this one, right? Now, I'm not claiming I know how it works, like in full detail, but overall, the difference between stargates and phantom gates are that phantom gates sort of act as this unexplainable electromagnetic discharge that emits into this dimension that allows for not just stargates to be activated more easily, Easily, but allows for interdimensional travel through other natural forms such as astral proje- projection meditation and things like this now again like i said this is not a paranormal or spiritual episode per se but when a lot of people think of you know you got your aliens here you got your your ghosts or your spirits there how do they come together guys they're one in the same in a lot of aspects right now again we could argue about astral projection and what that really is and what that really does that's not even the point here but ultimately phantom gates are a set of electromagnetic energy and frequencies that seem to be act as a sort of discharge, not just from, you know, the angel dust that is emitted from UFOs, but they're random anomalies energetically throughout the world. Now, maybe they're not so random, or maybe they are. Maybe they correspond with multiple energetic grids that surround the earth. It's hard to say. But the first thing I like to start with is, believe it or not, a U.S. Air Force's patent for teleportation. So first off, here's what we're going to see. United States patent application, full body teleportation system. I'd like to thank my friend Genius for sending this over. But if we take a look here... First off, what we're going to see when we look into who filed the patents and all that, you're going to find the same kind of crap, right? You're going to find the front company, the person that doesn't exist, the whole, you know, the whole 10 yards or the whole nine yards, sorry. So if we take a look here, let's look at how specific some of these descriptions are. But what we're going to notice more specifically as I'm putting the pictures up on the screen right now is that quantum teleportation, guys, publicly has actually already been achieved. So that's nothing really dramatic. I mean, people would rather focus on, you know, Mr. Potato Head and Kim Kardashian, uh, Mr. Potato Head being canceled and Kim Kardashian and Kanye West being divorced. But the information is right here, right? There's nothing particularly significant or relatively new per se. The groundbreaking information is slowly making its way into the public. So when it's time for a larger form of disclosure on the front end within the academic community, all these institutions within the disc complex, right? Distributive idea suppression complex can say, yeah, well, you know, we've been putting it out there for a while, right? Again, this is what I mean by small connections. It's drop feeding, right? Now, what I find most interesting within this particular document is a reference to Planck's length. Now, how often did have we brought that up in the last few days? And that wasn't honestly, that was not a pre-plan for me to lead up to this. This was totally coincidental. And so let's just take a look at the, the formal definition of Planck length, okay? Because I don't think we have before. And for this episode, we're going to need to understand. So, and I quote, in physics, the Planck length is a unit of length. It is also the reduced Compton wavelength of a particle with Planck mass. It is equal to, in the, you know, 1.616 to blah, blah, blah. It is a base unit in the system of Planck units developed by physicist Max Planck. The Planck length can be defined from three fundamental physical constants. Now, I need you guys to keep this in mind, please. The speed of light in a vacuum, 
the Planck constant, and the gravitational constant, end quote. The gravitational constant is relative to that of the speed of light in a vacuum, but what if you have that within a vacuum that could be inverted and allow for things like, I don't know, the ghost particle? to come from wherever it comes from, another dimension, if you will, or what have you, another um, alternate reality, if you will, and come into this universe. Think about that, except this is being harnessed by interdimensional beings. And I know that might sound ridiculous, but just bear with me. We're going to have some of the evidence to, uh, to support that as well. Now, phantom gates unintentionally activate interdimensional beings simply because they are activated due to a more naturally occurring length of low frequential wavelengths. Okay, and what I mean by that is this when you have low energy wavelengths in general, it naturally it is the balance of the universe. It is the way in which the cosmos reside. And and I mean that in the sense that when you get, for example, you know, a bad feeling or a bad vibe from somebody or something like this, just the aura, like you know, not even if you look at their face, just in general, you just have a bad feeling in a certain room that you're in. Those are short, low level EMF wavelengths. All right. And that's just the I don't even know why that's just the way the universe is. It seems like that's something that a lot of the, uh, you know, the Zeta Reticuli, the Nordics, the Alpha Draconians seem to accept as well. It's something they can't necessarily manipulate, but it's something they could harness if they wanted to. Now, again, when you harness negative wavelengths, it's not necessarily a good thing, but let's continue on. So when you have natural EMF energy in a place where you feel that you can meditate more easily and access different dimensions in a spiritual sense, what happens when you apply a synthetic stargate to that particular area, right? What happens there is that you need in many different ways, certain, I guess we could say frequential apparatuses to occur. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at defense1.com. And I quote, new AI can detect emotion with radio waves. There are national security and privacy implications to an experimental UK neural network that deciphers how people respond to emotional stimuli, end quote. Now, first off, let's establish the fact that this is a form of drop feeding. You don't think secretly they've had this for years? Come on, I, I would dare to say based off of my data and research, since at least the 60s, they've established this thanks to their understanding and exchange of technology and knowledge with other alien races, which is why when I say alien spirits and all that, one and the same, which is why a lot of people who see a lot of ghosts tend to have dreams of aliens and things like this. And I know that for a fact, because a lot of you have told me, but when we take a look that new AI can detect emotion with radio waves, what we're going to see there is that it mentions Planck's length, not only that, but it mentions Planck's length in the pattern of teleport. But on top of all this, when someone is lying, it says here, it talks about and references the fact that lower frequency energy waves are emitted from that person. Are they being emitted from, you know, the pineal gland or what have you? It's hard to say, but let's go even further now. So there's something I did want to mention within this episode that I, I realized I can't publicly having to do with adrenochrome. And we have some evidence to support that. It'll be in the, the members only episode on Patreon in the coming days. But I want to speak about specifically something having to do with ritual child abuse and someone named Jane Tripp. Now, she's an investigative journalist and all that. She's someone who seems to have activated, whether intentionally or unintentionally, a handful of interdimensional beings and UFO craft around where she lives and things like this, and she has the evidence to support it. Once I present that, you guys can decide for yourselves what you think. But ultimately here, what we're seeing is that Operation Flickr, the investigation into the top level four classified Pentagon and NASA employees very, very quietly um, abducting children and child pornography and things like that, that quietly got, you know, turned down. And I'm sorry to sound like a broken record if I'm repeating myself. But ultimately, what we see there is we see an initiation into some form of ritual child abuse that activates the RH null type blood within these children, which in the members only... Uh, area. We're going to be talking about that in the coming days. But what we're seeing there is we're ultimately seeing that people, particularly children, and it's unfortunate to say harvest are being harvested for their RH null, not RH negative, RH null. Now, allegedly before I had thought there were only a handful of people in the world with RH null. It turns out there's even more, a lot of them having to do with children. Again, RH null has to do with people tending to have more intuition and things like this. I don't think it's a coincidence that if we look back to a, an episode I did about three months back, or maybe even more, we're going to find that 
children from the Vatican that sign up to be exorcists that coincidentally have RH null blood types are then being sent from the Vatican to DARPA. But not only that, they have RH null. Then once they get sent to DARPA, they disappear and no one knows where they go. Now, it's interesting. The same dates that we're going to talk about in the members only episodes about these children disappearing, because I can't get any more specific without possibly having this, this episode removed. The same dates are aligned with that in which the FBI, coincidentally and ironically, which could be a coincidence, but the same date that the FBI updated their ritual child abuse document. Again, guys, we're looking for the small connections here. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about too is that when we see that there are different occurrences within the patent that is filed here, we're also going to notice something else too, and this is going to be the best part of it actually, which has to do with Jane Tripp. Now, let's take a look here at educateyourself.org. Now, this these are transcripts from Jane's script and all that and also some things that are, you know, referenced about her in a book and all that. And if we take a look here, we're going to see there's a few different links of some pictures that Jane sorry, that Jane Tripp uh published and released. We click on one link and we see here 404 not found. How coincidental. Fine, whatever, right? We click on the other link, which is in the description for those on YouTube. You can check this out yourself. We click on the other link. Here's what we're going to see. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not necessarily, um, I don't necessarily comment on in a spiritual sense when I'm doing episodes, but seeing some of these photos really made my skin crawl. And look, maybe they're fake, but I doubt it. I don't see why they would be in this case. Now, take a look here, for example. This is a prime example of an inner, two interdimensional beings harnessing phantom gates, right? And this is why humans are harnessed, well, I don't want to say harvesting, but let's call it recruiting children with the RH null blood type in order to activate this. Because when you have RH null, you're more pure in a sense of, let's say, um, uh, uh, spiritually, right? And in, not even just intellectually, but spiritually, which allows for that blood energetically to be applied to many different things, whether it's spacecraft, whether it's activating phantom gates and things like this, right? So let's take a look at this picture here, right? First off, this is, she claims here, you know, there was no train coming. It was next to some train tracks and things like this next to a railway track in a rural area. And there are these interdimensional beings, but that's not even the creepiest thing. Let's keep going here and let's take a look. So this is when she was watching the wedding of Prince Charles and Camilla that was televised. Her camera picked up this, this gentleman's picture on the screen, as we can see here, right? But it's not even about that. Let's take a look even further. Let's scroll down a little bit more, and here's what we're going to find. She's about to... This is um, Jane Tripp lying, about to lie down on her bed. We can see her arm there, and this very bright, clear face pops up, Okay. Her partner took the picture of this and was found. And not only that, but take a look here. The second frame had this other being right here. You see that? The nose, the mouth. And she's all the way in the back, by the way. She's not either of these two faces. I just want to make that very clear. Now, this is what many would refer to as interdimensional beings. This is what a lot of people would refer to in the ancient and religious scriptures, regardless of which religion, as you know, like the, the flying uh, pig-headed demons and the dragons and things like this. You know what? A lot of people don't tend to believe in that. The reason why I don't rule it out is because of these types of cases. What if these beings were interdimensional beings rather than that of those within the three-dimensional world? It's not only that, but what we're seeing here within the physical aspect of the modern-day world, we're seeing that the military in certain ways and the military-industrial complex and the intelligence agencies, they get this. They know what's happening here. But they don't care about these interdimensional beings. They just want these children with RH null blood types in order to use for many different things, such as using nukes in many cases. And the reason why they use nukes, and sorry to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, but the reason why they used RH null blood within nukes is because whenever they launch a nuke, assuming that certain you know alien species allow them, they disrupt the cosmos in favor of humans, which is, again... Technically speaking, we can argue bad, right? Because it's a self-serving concept, similar to that of the Alpha Draconians, right? And so the RH null allows the nuclear blast to not only disrupt the cosmos in this dimension, but disrupt the cosmos in different dimensions. Do you guys notice that certain documents are missing regarding certain nuclear testing sites and certain facilities that occurred? Not only was it like Phil Schneider said to blow certain greys out of their bases many, many years ago during the initial nuclear testing, but they found that if they could apply the RH null blood type, which allegedly descends from the fallen angels and all that, we're going to find 
that you can actually do much more damage on a spiritual level, which, believe it or not, the military is very aware of and they're very vigilant of because if these beings have enough power or energy to intersect or intermerge into this dimension, then there's a serious issue, right? And so the other thing we also have to look at here is we also have to take a step back and say that a lot of these blasts, these nuclear blasts, are also used for gang stalking and the reason for that is because after a nuclear blast with rh null blood type is emitted right it creates interdimensional beings and it creates not creates them sorry it creates a doorway for them it creates a doorway that allows for these other beings to come through and at the same time what happens here is that this is the same technology harnessed within gang stalking because this is when the military says these beings are coming through they use three-dimensional physical technology in this in this realm let's call it to harness certain interdimensional beings and focus them towards gang stalking a particular person. It doesn't mean they control the beings, but they energetically attract them. It's kind of like um, the, the old example of, you know, someone putting a pie outside of their kitchen windowsill and you smell the pie and you walk towards it. You don't necessarily have to, but what else is there to do? You're going to walk towards it, right? So, I want you guys to let me know what you think. I know it probably wasn't the most exciting episode, but it is something I really did want to cover just because there's so much here, guys. I mean, we look at the patents, we look at Planck's length, we look at so many different things. I mean, you can see here that, again, according to educateyourself.org, surprisingly, Jane Tripp discovered how to make visible in photo photos scalar waves and EMF waves being directed against her home, uncovering images of the actual radiation transmission patterns over her house. She was also able to cut through cloaking facades to reveal images of stealth spacecraft as well as various covert experiments taking place in the sky right over her head, often revealing a great deal of intricate detail. End quote. I bring this up because the last connection I want to make before ending this episode is, doesn't that seem extremely similar to the secret space program that that soldier in Warsaw spoke about in yesterday's episode that we covered? Doesn't that seem in the pond episode? Doesn't that stream, seem extremely similar? direct energy weapons, this type of spiritual energetic facade being overplaced over certain individuals' homes, right? And so what we're seeing here is that there's a lot more that goes on, not just within the airspace above us or in the water below us, but in different dimensions all around us. So I want you guys to let me know what you think. Again, it was more of an analytical episode instead of a, uh, you know, information-based episode, but I felt like it was very necessary to be covered, and we will catch you guys tomorrow. Cheers.